Ikea Yersatini is the cut you on. The cheese shark eat me. Way to ah, we kashuk a yin sisk into a sock of it. Ah, 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 claim shukat hoo. Kashkadena has to twash good. Way to sisk aya has to yet our spaini. A joy yajakuta. Hasaway has to eat her too. Ah, has crahoos. Was a car to saw it a cashach to wash good sisk a yahosa. Hanahoe should see in a two yeti. Cock, tach hanahoe with sisk so poor. Ye away, Han has a cow and nick, play dach ah. So I of Soran, play car in a Soran walk. Ya cut a now he came, your chakuta po a ka tu wu. Gospone yu he watan, cha adusa yu he watan. Gone aya has to yet out out. Ak was pain, wait up. A joy a ka ka tu wu. Sing it on the tani teen away. Gos at the two aya at the goody. Chakut ku u ku a. Kone i da da we tu da tan. Ka tu wu i i de awa has kone ke kwa shi. Gashi i de awa has a shi. Has at shi. A ka i da da we tu da tan. Which a good ku u wu. A chwe ya ke sa. Ka tu wu so ran. Ye awa wu tu wa sa. Ki at ke. Ka gach ta a ku. Wait a ka ya a in ye jene a do in your ach the tongue. Would you in your at the shah at the data tin a sahaya tea? Yes, the cut we eat the cup. Was catch a sugar at a day a day ka eat us to yang ka eat a day ka eat us to yet yang. Kata ya tuas ah tuas aku wush tua kerana ya tenak, aku kesedihan ayah wujud atas kini. Khusus aku ko aku ah kesedihan awe ye ti, ya ah tuas aku kesedihan wujud ini yuk agak tu saati. Kengit kena kuan kanin jadi, aja ah tuas aku kesedihan. Wujing yu kagak tila ati. Ikan cheese yu han ik ayok sa tini. Ikan cheese. Wal kone kagak kone kijis kaya kagkina. Great to see everybody. We had a bit of a late start today. Trying to figure out the classroom situation still. I got bumped out of the classroom I'm usually in, and someone else is in there. So then I'm in the one right next to it. And we showed up tonight, and then there was a bunch of people in there. So then we were going to go to the one that I'm usually in, but someone's supposed to be there, and no one was there yet. So we came across the hall to this room. I had to figure out where everything is. And uh, let's see, what else? We have this new device that we're trying out. It's called an owl. But we were talking earlier. I don't like the name owl. Owl is a very powerful thing. If it's looking at your face, it's not a... It's not a good thing for a lot of Native American people. I think it, especially this little one we call Kuk, which is a, a little owl. And so I asked the other class, what do you folks want to name it? Someone said, I of Sauron. That was a good name. And then uh, someone else said, a chickadee. That's what I said in Tlingit. Is sometimes when you're walking around and a chickadee starts calling to you, it means someone's thinking about you. And so that was a pretty fitting name because then when you start talking, it looks at you. And so, kind of neat. Then we can hear each other through it and see each other. So, we're trying this new thing out and seeing if it's a little bit more interactive. But then again, there's, you know, ideally there'd be a table full of us in here and then a room full of us online. Work with what we got. So, let me know how it sounds, how it looks, how it feels, and we will test it out and see. We want to use this to go back to those microphones we had. 
Uh, I guess, can you folks hear me okay? Does it sound? How's it sound? It's, it's harder for me, but I have a very old Mac that uh, speaker doesn't really work. So I definitely miss seeing your, I, I hear an echo and I'm used to seeing your face. And so both the sound and visuals harder for me, but that's just me. I think everybody else has probably microphones or speakers that work a little better. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a bit quiet, so and then it's far away, it's kind of like way over there. So we might, there was an option of getting like two and pairing them together, and I could have one probably like, but then yeah, what does it sound like? I'm, I'm interested in that, because the other one, like the, the little puck is right here, so uh, yeah, it might not, might not work for us, so we'll see. And then I'll listen to it. I'll listen to the recording too. The vowel is intended for conferencing. So it's intended to go in the middle of the conference table and people sitting around. Mm -hmm. So there's probably a, a maximum radius beyond which it doesn't work very well. And I wonder if we might run into this in this room in any classroom. Yeah, right. And maybe it's catching, because it's directional too, it's probably catching the echo off the walls. And so. But there's a cool little split screen thing. We might end up just using it as a camera. Uh, because like, for content courses, we're always speaking in English, so it's not as critical to have like the highest sound quality as possible. But I think teaching Shingit, you gotta really have a different thing. So maybe I'll grab the pucks on the break. And then we'll do a little, like a true A-B test just for fun. Okay. Yeah, I think the split screen is really neat because then and it will like look at different people who are talking as well. So there, and ideally, like it would be in the middle, and then we would sort of be sitting around it in a circle, and it kind of looks at, looks back and forth. It's some kind of fun thing. Okay, we'll keep trying. Kune, can you do like what Yeh Kagu has, where there's like both her face looking in and than being part of that split screen, or is that not possible since you're the uh, chickadee? Yeah, say so you change it to this, oh, okay. but then that goes away. So the Got other it. thing is like, which is we're trying to figure out too, like does there need to be like even a whole separate computer in here too, where that's sort of, uh, and you could pin that as the camera. I could put it closer, I could just sort of drag it closer to me, so then you can see both of us and we're kind of a little bit closer. Yeah, maybe just... Sheesh. Oh, there it is. Now it looks, it's looking at the television. <laughs> Oh, that's no, just dasa. Okay, maybe yes, uh, could try to say something. I think it sees the face on the screen, oh, and I think it's a... directional to the face. And I think if you have something else up there, it might not insist on including a chunk of the screen because it's just her face. It's not other things. I would look at okay. Okay. This is an interesting class. Okay. Creepy, huh? Yeah, it, it sees faces. That's what I got anti Dolores on there. Okay, hold on one sec. You're gonna cover her up. Yeah. You cover so. her up and it go and it goes away on the on the screen, then it's definitely seeing faces. Okay. Now Hmm. Okay. Well, 
ไปทางนั้นโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเ
The title of it is Atangi, and that would translate as people used our language. Uh, you could probably call this the way people use our language. And so this is a fourth person. So, do I have a little mouse? I have a mouse. Oh, there it is. Okay. Wududliyech is a fourth person perfected. So, it has happened, people did it. And then, Tlayech is the same verb in a command form. So, we're going to kind of look at the command, the perfective, well, the imperfective, the perfective, and the future. Those are like your four key forms in order to be able to communicate. There's more than that, but actually I think imperfective, perfective, future. If you can do those, you can talk. That's like really a, a way to unlock the language is by learning how those work. And the verb, really, you learn how to do two things. You build the prefix, and then you understand what the stem is going to be. So the prefix is going to contain who's doing it, who it's happening to, uh, so that's what we call transitivity. What's, is there an object? Is there a subject? Is there neither? Is there both? Then there's going to be thematic stuff, which is a basically a noun built into a verb. You could put walk in there, sh, sh, j, ek, kus, ka, ya. Uh, those can all be built into verb. And then there's the conjugation stuff. This is the, the magic spot where the perfective marker pops up. These ga, ga, na markers pop up. And then you've got the classifier. And then the classifier, usually you sort of narrow it down to like, is it going to be this one or that one? And if you can get it down to two, then the mode will tell you what, what it's going to be. The stem contains meaning and then it contains variation, which means it's going to be short and high, long and low, or long and high. And I like to think of the long and low version as the default. That's the, that's the mode it's usually in. And then something happens to change it. Okay, ask questions if you got them. That's when you get up to the examples. So a starting point for starting to sort of look at this stuff is the preverb, the object, and the subject. Those are two really big areas that we tend to focus on. There are things other than this that pop up in the preverb. We can see ya, k, ye, klesh, uh, ade. Those, those will all be preverbs. And there's, there's a bunch of stuff that's going to pop up. But for now, to start to sort of think about the base level of starting, of changing verbs, Chush is the self. Woosh or wooch is to each other. And hus pluralizes the third person. So then that gets us over to the object pronouns, which is to whom the verb happens, right? So we've run through this list. Chat, ha, i, ye. A zero marker or a. Uh. It's only a. Uh if the subject is also third person. Ka or k, at, and sh. So sh is a contraction of chush. So it means doing the verb to yourself. Shkhodzitin, I saw myself. And then we get this little, if you see that plus d on there, that means that pushes the classifier to go plus d. So if you ever have woosh or wooch right in front of the verb, or you have sh right in front of the verb, that's going to push the classifier plus d. Ka i khwatletu. I taught people. Shtu khwatletu. I studied, taught it inside myself. Uh, then you got the subject. So the subject, you have fewer options. So you have I, we, you, y'all, they, someone or people. So those ones, the only thing you got to keep an eye on is if we go fourth person, 
do. You get this kind of special rule. Every zero classifier must be minus D. Every non-zero classifier must be plus D. So it has to be dl and it has to be z and it has to be j, but it can't be d or da, right? It, it just, it cannot. And so that's just sort of a, once you put that fourth person on there, that's why it goes from ich sechan to edudzechan. You go dudze, it switches to that plus d. So we're going to focus on changing the subject here. We're not going to focus on the object, we're just focused on the subject. I think the subject is the thing you really start to, to mess around with, because the object, it changes things, was kind of on the, the front side of the verb, the very, very front. So these ones, ha, t, or I guess ha, t, e, y, unmarked, the third person is always, always, always unmarked. And then do. Okay. These are the classifiers. Again, four groups. A verb has a group associated with the verb. It will not switch to a different group. Yuck a kesh. So you could say, I wish I had a pointer. Hold on a second. So you could say, yuck a and then you could jump to but that's a different verb because now we've changed the classifier. Usually you're mostly going from minus i to plus i. That's usually the big thing that you're focused on. Is it going to be ya or zero? Is it going to be, well, I guess sa or se, sha or she, sha or she. And again, coming back to these sort of thoughts of a default, the top left, or I guess, what am I saying? Yeah, the left-hand side is the default form. So I, th I like to think of it this way. In its natural state, the classifier is zero, sa, sha, and sha. Like that's the classifier. You can add the letter I in there if you're talking about the verb happening. So it marks something, it marks a change. And then you can add, the D can be added in there or sometimes it's just built in there if you're talking about doing it to the self, doing it to each other, or kicking the object out of certain verbs. That's everything, that's how the classifier works. Then we're just gonna keep seeing it in action. Any questions? And Khuni, didn't you say the sh is like usually connected to negative or? Yeah, they, they are affiliated with function or meaning. So the zero group is just at this the default. It's the most common classifier. It's got, there's more zero than anything by far. S and L serve one shared purpose and then one sort of slightly different purpose. So it will switch to S or L to sometimes say, well, this didn't just happen. Somebody made it happen. So you start putting agency into certain verbs. Not all the time, but there's certain ones. So you could have yuck a, it's good. Yishik a, you improved it. You could have yannik, then you could have yisanik. So yannik, it's sick, or they are sick. And yisanik, you got them sick. You gave them a cold. So that's one thing that'll happen is it'll switch sometimes. The other thing, generally speaking, the S classifier tends to put things into categories. It says we're gonna put it into a category. It's not just a thing, it's this type of thing. Um, but they'll, they'll both do that. Both the S and the L will do that. Like, you gay, it's big, gay. A living thing is big or it's tall. So that it's it's a category thing. The L classifier is also associated with kind of having something. Like so if I put on a hat and it has ears, 
It could be Llegugu So guk is the root. Llegini, you know, Llegini would mean it has arms. Llegushi, it has uh, a thumb or a dorsal fin. Kullegus, uh, the weather has clouds. So sometimes the L classifier works like that. And it's not like these aren't just hard, fast rules, but they're sort of tendencies associated with the classifier. Then the SH is associated with kind of things that people don't want to do. So like that's where you get it's evil as, or it's bad instead of not good. Yeah, well. So let's watch them in action. So here's a verb root, cha, to eat. There's a cha to paddle, but that's not the one we're looking at. That little number one tells us this is the one for eating. We're gonna, you know, you will reach a point where you'll be able to look at that verb theme and then use that verb any way you want to, right? All the information is coded there for you. There is an object, the capital O, there is a subject, the capital S. It is a zero group classifier, so I expect it to be zero or ya. And it turns to ya when we say it happened. Cha is the verb root. The number one says there's another cha out there. Underneath that, we get a zero act verb. So this tells us a couple things. The zero tells us the conjugation type. It's very important so that we, we should know in the command form, there won't, you won't hear a prefix. You'll just say, ha, or eat it. The other thing is it's going to tell us what the stem is going to be. If it's a zero, it should be long and high in the perfective. And we'll get to all these rules, but you'll, you'll sort of get these sort of lists of these rules, and we'll start smashing through these verb modes so you can start predicting them. The act verb means there's usually a subject and an object. It means there is an imperfective. And then that's what the act tells you. If it's an event verb, there's no imperfective. If it's a motion verb, there's no imperfective. There is only imperfectives, which is happening right now, for act verbs, state verbs, and position verbs. Those are the only three that have an imperfective. The others do not. Then uh, it's transitive that's just giving you, it's just saying there's an object in a subject. It's just a little reminder there. Then the definition for subject to eat object. This one, the object will almost always be third person unless you're going to talk to your potato or whatever before you eat it. Or there's, there's a story of a giant owl who says, I'm going to eat you all up. Scary. That's why we rename this little thing. That's everything for sort of reading the verb theme. The other thing is just remembering there's four verb classify, there's four verb conjugation types. Zero, na, ga, and ka. Zero is kind of associated with reaching a goal. Na is the ongoing process. Ga is upward. Ka is downward. You will get to other things as well. Zero and na are kind of a team, and ga is kind of its own thing, and ka is kind of its own thing. But in other ways, you have zero and everything else. And so what I'm talking about here, when we talk about, sometimes there's got to be uh, like in a progressive imperfective, it's in the process of happening, like ya na gut, ya anas um, Sometimes it's ya, sometimes it's ke, sometimes it's ye. And it's predictable. In the progressive imperfective, it's going to be ya for zero and na verbs. It will be ke for ga and ye for ka. And it has to be. So you have to say, ye and gun, the sun is shining right now. And you have to say, ke na kein, it's getting better right now. 
because the ka and the ka in those verbs. This is also true in the future. Zero and na don't need anything in front of them. You say kakwaha, I'm gonna eat it. Kakwata, I'm gonna sleep. A ga verb must have k in the future. Kekwake, it's gonna be better. And the ka verb must have ye. Ye ikwasatin. That's why it exists. That's a ka verb. Ye akuchtagan. It's gonna be sunshine. Any questions about that? Is there any way of guessing whether it's a ga or a ga, or is it just you have to memorize them? You kind of gotta memorize it. Um, because then that's gonna tell you both the stem variation. So the stem variation is you have the zeros and everything else. And then they're gonna they're gonna go like you know, short and high, long and low, long and high depending on the combination of the conjugation type and the stem variation and the mode. But you can tell, like if you didn't look up a verb and someone said, um, if they said, kek koshat, I'm gonna catch it. You hear the K in the front and so you should be able to predict that that's a g verb. Or they might say, yek koshashat, like, oh, okay, that one's ka. And you'll also hear it in the command form. So if you learn a new verb from a speaker, you might sort of just say, oh, how would you say I'm going to do that? And then that might give you some of the clues. Or if you say, how do you say do that? And then if they, they'll tell you, then you should hear that in the beginning. And it's really wild because you've got birth speakers and they just, they just know all this stuff. It's programmed in their mind. You know, I got sitting with Nora and I said, Ya and the gun. She said, Ye and the gun. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Khune is the, um, I know we talked about the tilde. And so for these slides, because you don't have the X, this means that the stem will vary? Yes. I would say just think of every stem as being variable unless it has an X. There's only a few of them that are invariable. There's not very many. Okay. So a quick clarification. Um, oh. So the expansion here of the goal ongoing, the na, ga, ga, that's, this one is the, is the first one though. It's, it's the, it's the, it's the goal. It's Mark. Yeah, it's like, it seems to have this, and and there's a bit of debate in some of the language community, like, you know, there's, there is a learner and he says, I don't think it's goal oriented. I think it's something different. But the reason we say that is you'd say, I went home. But that doesn't tell you if I made it. If I wanted to tell you I made it, I'd say, And those, those are both perfective, they both already happened, but one encodes the completion of the act in there. So that's why, and so we, we sort of say it's goal-oriented. But usually there's some definitive point where it's it's done. Which, you know, not to say that the na never ends, it's just saying like that's not the focus of it. Okay. Okay. So this one is a zero classifier, so we should predict that it's either going to be zero or ya. Yeah. And if our focus is on like command, imperfective, perfective, future, because it's an act verb, the only one that can be plus i. And now out of those options is the perfective. So when we look at the start looking at the verb, it's gonna be zero, zero, ya, yeah, zero. Okay? If it's a state verb, the imperfective is plus i. Yak a kitsin yanik 
Shichan. Like so. Because the state is achieved. Yes. The state has happened. So the plus I says okay. it, it has happened. So it's got to be that way to be that way. Okay. Okay, so I said it already. But anybody remember how to say eat it as a command? Yeah, well, everybody say ha. Ha. And how about I'll give you the stem variation is short and high. This next one is short and high. I am eating it. Ha ha. Yeah, we ha ha. Everybody say ha ha. Ha ha. You are eating it. Iha. Yeah, Iha. Iha. So this one is, oops. <laughs> this one is, uh, I. So it's technically zero, I, zero, ha. But if there's nothing in between the i and the root, it's going to go long every time. Okay. How about they are eating it? A singular they. Aha. Yeah, what? Aha. Aha. And that's that third person, third person, right? So that switches the object. It's been zero, zero, now it switches to A. It's going to do that in the next two categories down. So I'll give you the stem variation here. It's a zero open stem. That means it's going to be long and high. You will learn this, but I'll tell you right now, it's going to be long and high. But how would I say I ate it? <laughs> So if we look at those vowels, long, low, long, high, right? Everything in the prefix has to be low. It always has to be low. And this is a zero, which means there's two ways that the second person can go when we're looking at a perfective. It can be ye or iya. If it's zero, it's going to be iya. So if you had iya as the prefix, and then the, the, then the stem is long, what's it going to be? Iya ha. Iya ha. Iya ha. Iya ha. And how about they eat it? Aha. And how about I will eat it? Uh, well, I'm going to give you the future. The future is always the future positive. We're not going to do positives. We're not going to do negatives yet. It will always want to be long and high. So the stem is going, it's going to be ha, just like this one, ha, but the prefix has to be different. Ha, or some people are going to have a little bit of a W in there. Uh, but whoops, dang it. <laughs> I keep trying to, I'm trying to drive with two different screens and I'm not doing a good job. So sometimes you are going to see, I'm just going to put it next to it, like this. So here's what, how I want you folks to think of this. The first person future is kukha, kukha, kukha. If there's any kind of vowel that runs right into this, it's going to put, it's going to contract it to kukha so that this, the U will jump over to the other side and become a W. For example, 
kokha i'm going to eat it nechtekhot so that day even though it's a separate word cuz it ends with a vowel and is part of that preverb it will push it to contract so it'll just be kokha so just keep that in mind what's that you the, that's a good way to think of it. The U gets pushed over kuk to kuk Yeah, I, I used to think it was just optional, but then uh, some elders were explaining how it worked to me in Tesla. So I got, I got learned. Uh, when the elders are talking about this, are they coming from, this just sounds right, rather than from a linguistic analysis? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we teach it. I had this written as K underline K W A, but then they'd say no, that would be kuka. I was like, oh, okay. And then usually I would that would get me to thinking like, why is it? And then we would start going over examples, and then they would say, yeah, yeah. If there's a, if the, but they would say if there's a vowel before it. Although the one who taught me that was K Yishi Bessie Cooley, who's had years of linguistic training by working intensively with linguists and then also by self-study and now getting her master's degree as a as an elder who's just wicked awesome okay the second person is going to have a similar rule and so well so is the third person right so how about you are going to eat it So this one is going to have a similar rule, right? So you're going to have kaki or gaki. Same thing. I want you to think of the second person future as gaki. But if a vowel pops up right before it, it's going to switch it to kaki. So all it, it's a contraction rule, and really like it just says, if you knock the a out of this, it turns it into a k. Which kind of, if you want to get like, really kind of nerd out about that, it is a k, but the vowel turns it into a g. That's how I think it works. They are going to eat it. Akwaka. Akwaka. Yeah, away. Akwaka. This one does have the same rules. Okay, except for this one has the letter A in front of it. So it must go to this. This is the contracted form for this as well. Otherwise, it's kukka. It looks just like the first person, except you change those to G's. So kukka is, is how it would go if there was no vowel, right? So you could say, um, well, those, uh, well, you could say, uh, let me make another slide. How should I? I can do it this way. Uh, I don't know why I have that and get rid of it. So for example, here's how, so you could say, right, to say it will be, is you end up with this, yekwati. Right, and so this vowel is part of the preverb, it pushes it into this contracted form. But if I wanted to say, uh, it will be red, I would have khan yach, that is closed. So that means I'm going to get the uncontracted version of this. Khan yach kukati. Right, so kukka is the form, kukwa is the contracted form. We see this for all, for those three. Kukka, kaki, kukka. And then they can all contract. Which really is all of them, that G turning into a K. And then usually 
For the first and third person, the W jumping to the other side, or the U jumping to the other side. Ah, oh, the cheese. Okay. Thoughts or questions? Did you maybe? Um, I still feel like with these, I, I'm just purely memorizing, and I'm not able to like solve the puzzle in my head. Um, maybe with one of the non-future ones, could you kind of expand how like how the pieces move? Sure, like, uh, but we could take like this and I'll duplicate it. And then, so this is eat it. And this is what you have really. So those are the parts of that. For a command, for just to command a single person, there's, it's a kind of a weird thing, like the pronoun just disappears. So that, that happens in English too. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Run. Right. Hide. You do get one of these exceptions though, where if the classifier has the the letter it has the D component in there, then you have to have it. So like it did not. We're gonna see that one next. You'll see it coming right up. So this one, uh, what do you folks think the order is for the things that are in here? Just stating it with a zero, you're putting yourself in front of that and then eight, I eight, so ha ha. And if we were to like kind of expand it out, there's this invisible third person, then there's me, then there's a zero classifier, and then there's ha. So I can actually copy this and then I'll paste it and then I'll paste it again. And I'm going to change that to I, and then I'm going to change that to zero, which pushes this one to become a. So these, these are like sort of like looking at the components. If we were to just pull it apart, like we're taking a little watch apart and we got to put the watch back together. Right. And, uh, it's the same thing down here. So here, you could also copy this and paste it, but then it goes long, right? You see it long right there, and there's one other chain. Well, there's two other changes. What do you folks think they are? Uh, it's, ha it's happening trajectory. Yeah, but like, so something has to change here, and then something has to change here. Well, the uh, makes, rounds it. Yeah, that, that goes to the plus I version, the classifier goes plus I, and then this is a perfective, so it must get the perfective marker right here. So this is what you see, why you see this wuh sound popping up in here, so you got Object perfective, which is that conjugation section. Subject. Classifier. And so we can do this as well. So we'll copy this here, paste it, paste it. So the order of these things is not changing, but the way that they contract is changing. And really, the first person is the one where the perfective marker jumps over the subject. It just tends to do that. I think it's because wuh, wuh, it just, it's too awkward to do it that way. So this changes to i, and this changes to zero, which makes this one change to a. So again, we see this, that's where those changes are happening, is right there in the classifier. And then also there's, there's nothing had to be activated here in the conjugation. For an imperfective, you don't need anything in there. There's no conjugation stuff that's in there. So I know that this ends with ha, but what are the things that have to be in front of it? The object stays the same. Zero. No perfective marker. The subject stays the same, but there's the conjugation stuff. Ga, 
For the future, the classifier must always be the minus I form. For the future, you always have to have G, U, and, oops, what am I doing? U, and B. So this is where we're sort of seeing these changes, right? Is that thing is popping up. That thing is popping up. That and the classifier and the stem are the three big changes. But then we got to sort of like when we're building prefixes and we learn how to do this, and like this, this chart is meant to say like, kind of memorize it, right? We'll show you what it is, look at it, talk about it. There's a bigger exercise coming. We're going to read about all these different parts. Like I'm going to say, okay, folks, it's time to master the perfective verb. So we're going to learn how to make perfectives. I'm going to show you all the rules. I'm going to show you what the prefix combinations are. And you're going to look at that. And then we're going to do a whole bunch of verbs. And you are going to predict them, what they're going to be. I saw you. I saw them. I saw you all. I saw them all. I saw people. You saw me. Right? And just going through and just drilling, drilling, drilling. And seeing how one change triggers like a few different changes sometimes in the prefix. So if that's the case, we do the same thing all the way across. And here, the same thing. This changes to i. This changes to zero, which causes that to go to a. But then you're getting, so ga, u, ta, kha is going to be kukha or kukha every time. Ga, u, ka, e is gaki. Sheesh, that's a good question. Yeah, oh. this line, go ahead. Oh, oh. I, I'm, I'm back on the perfective. So if you're on the future, go ahead. So this is a good way to look at how it'll change from kuka. I mean, this to me is making a lot of sense to see that the G's won't go together. And it's like, ooh, ooh, uh, yeah, so it's, I'm, I've learned a lot right here. Yeah, and it's, it's sort of like seeing the parts and seeing, like you cannot, I don't think you could memorize all of the possible prefixes. There's just no way. But if you see what's there, and it's sort of like, it's sort of like a, a, I don't know, like a little magic box. Once you turn this switch and that switch and that switch, that's a future. It has to be a future now. Once you turn just this single switch, that's a perfective. So I had a question about the perfective. Uh -huh. Just trying to figure out the y and the ya. So the y is where the w and the y comes from. Yes. And so we and write it as y. And a long time ago, it was this ng sound, right? The, it still is in Tesla, right? It's still, but really only for a second person plural, which we'll get to later. But we still write it that way, but just remember, it's usually a W. Unless it's the second person, then it's a Y. So that I sound will push it to be more of a Y sound. And then, and then so then does the YA add an A? Is that where the, the other A comes from? Yes. So what happens is, like the process here, this contracts to a W, jumps over the H, and then this contracts to just A. But Hua. You're gonna, and, and the nice thing here, if you have any zero, it's a zero classifier. If you have a zero classifier verb, all these prefixes are going to be the same for them. Right? So if I change this uh, to Ta, for sleeping, I'd have chata, ita. Well, it would just be ta because there's no su there's no object for that one. Then you'd have chata. It'd be long. Uh, that one would be yita, and then wu ta. So I guess they are a little different, but um, but here it would be kukata, kukata, and kukata.
Oh, you're on mute. Back in the future, you said those could be contracted. Could you just include those? Because I'm taking a screenshot. How you did the k, um, it would be k, 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 And this one can't, but if, if there was no object, then it could. Because it would be they're, they're going to sleep. And I will, uh, I'll put a slideshow up of this version so that you all have it, with this slide in there. And we can go through the other ones too, it'll be the same process, like when we see a different verb. Although the classifier will change, and that'll change things up a little bit. Like when we get into a S classifier or a zero plus D, we'll see it'll be a bit different. Any other questions about this? Thoughts? So what happens with native speakers is they have all this internal, but it's just not articulated because you don't. If you know what it is you just say it you don't have to think about it as right much. yeah you know it's and it's really interesting um because there's a bunch of stuff like this that like in english like the you can have something like 13 different adjectives but they have to go in a certain order and you probably couldn't name that order but if someone said them you'd say just flip those around right don't say red big dog say big red dog but you don't know why Right? And so I think it's a similar thing, like, and it's just amazing to work with speakers because you see them do all this, all this stuff, and then even more, like this is just still at the basics, you know, and then we'll get into cereal and be like, wait, what? It, it amazes me that something as inanimate as a language still has so much structure that it keeps asserting Right. Sometimes against the, no, no matter what the, the living speakers do, the language, the structure of the language keeps asserting itself. Right. Through, from generation to generation, because kids always start out not knowing the rules and saying things that don't follow the rules. But the structure of the language just keeps asserting itself all the way through. And by the time the kid is five, they know most of the rules. And by the time they're 10, they know all the rules and they're correcting their younger siblings. Right. So it's really quite amazing. I don't think of languages as living, certainly not in a grammatical sense, but the way they assert themselves over time is something that living things do. And and it's interesting, like there might be there might be a day where there's ten thousand clinket speakers and then you don't have to crush this stuff so much. People will just correct you and you'll start to but then, but then, you know, there's, there's so many layers to it as well. well that's so. basically what's happened with Hebrew. Right. Because it went from being a, a, a language that was read, but not a language that was spoken for hundreds or thousands, a couple thousand years. And then people in Israel made a point of, of making it live by speaking it every day. Yeah. And now it's a living language. Yeah. For kids who don't understand the grammatical structure, but they know how to use it, which is pretty wonderful. Right? Okay. Let's try one more verb, then we'll take our break. We got a late start, sorry. Okay. We already ate, and we got a drink. Uh, so here, again, object, subject, zero classifier, but with the D. So it's going to be di or da, di, da, di, that's what we should expect. It's na, that's also open, right? And so open just means there's no consonant at the end. When we look at these things, we say, is it open or closed? And then is it marked high? Because if it's marked high, it doesn't go, it doesn't go low. And this is just an open stem. It's another zero act, so there will be an imperfective. It's zero, so we should expect it to be long and high in the perfective, and it must be long and high for the future, for the subject to drink the object. Okay. Classifier, it's going to be da or di. 
And we should expect all of them to be da, except for which one? Perfective. The perfective. So the perfective will be di, but the others will be, so you got da, da, di, da. It's predictable. It's completely predictable. The classifier is predictable, what it's going to do and be. But this one does have the D, so that means the, the command must start with I. It'll also be short and high, just so you know. Does it start with I because it's the second person and it's a command, or does the I, I, the I in front come out as the D classifier? All, okay, here, all, so, okay, let's go back to the classifier for a second. I gotta go way back, hold on. Well, okay, so back on the classifier. So if it's a command form, it's, you can't have the I in it. So we have zero, da, sa, s, sh, sh, sh. Okay, now here comes a big rule with a prefix. No matter what is in there, if a prefix has a consonant, it must have a vowel. So, a second person singular command does not need a pronoun. But if it's plus D, you might have only the S or the L or the SH, which means it must now have a vowel. To solve that, think it just says, oh, the D is there. Now you've got to throw the, the second person subject in there. So you're going to have ita, is, it, uh, oops. Yeah, ita, is, ich, ish. So it's the classifier that drives the second person pronoun back into the command form. Yeah, the plus D minus I have no vowels other than the zeros. And that will, that will, that'll just trigger some things every now and then. It's a deep dive into grammar tonight. This must be, we moved into the grammar room. The other room wasn't the grammar room. Uh -huh. I'm going okay. to I'm gonna have to listen to that one on like slow, <laughs> like 10 times. Yeah, just the, the basic part. If there's a consonant in the, there must be a vowel. You cannot just have a consonant in the prefix. Even something like a third person, like, let me show you an example. I'll show you an example. Is oh. that coming from pronounceability, or is that coming from some other linguistic, inarticulate linguistic imperative? It's probably, uh, well, that's a good question. It's probably because it makes other, if there's anything in front of it, it means it, 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 there's, it, there can't, you need a vowel to get to the next sound. That's what it is. So James Crippen, his theory was the vowels have less meaning than the consonants. But that means you need the vowel so that you can clearly hear which consonants are there. And in the verb dictionary, I'm going to show you an example. Uh, I've got to find it first. So does that mean we should write Shingit the way they write Hebrew with no vowels? Well, yeah, but then the vowels, then, but okay. then you have these sets of vowels too, which are, they have their own thing. Okay, what the hell, what is it? Um, yeah, look for color. Here it is. Okay. So here's our example. I'm going to put it up here. Zoom it way in. Make it big. Share the screen to this thing. Okay, so on page 51, we have this verb, for a salmon to change its color when it hits the fresh water. So we hear, see here, kat wudzak. Okay, that should be short. Uh, this is a perfective, and it's short and high, so it's a zero. Like we'll, we'll, you'll learn how to spot that. But down here, you have uk ak. That's the letter I. So if you didn't know this rule, you might think, doesn't that mean? you change color, like a second person singular? And the answer is no. Because this is in a repetitive form, 
The classifier is minus i, which means it's only the letter s. You cannot only have a consonant in the prefix. If that letter i wasn't there, the prefix would just be s. That would be the whole thing. And the Tlingit just will not allow that. Just Tlingit, Tlingit says, okay, this is a prefix. If you have a consonant, you must have a vowel. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that vowel has to be in front of the classifier consonant rather than after? Yes, because nothing can become, nothing can come between the classifier and the root. They, nothing can ever go in between them. And this doesn't even mean anything. It's just a peg vowel. Okay. Whew, maybe we, maybe we are changing color tonight. Huh. Sorry, you said it's always, a, it's always an I. That will be that sort of peg vowel? Yeah, or will it? It will be. Sheesh. Okay. Who wants to predict the command form? Drink it. You've already put it up on the screen. <laughs> it was up there probably 10 minutes ago. It did not. It was up there 10 minutes and 30 rules ago. It did not. It did not. It did not. It did not. Okay. For the imperfective, it will also be short and high. The classifier must be duh. So we know it should go duh, na. And if we, if we drop the first person subject in front of it, what are we going to get? I am drinking it. Is it khatana? Khatana. Khatana. If we change kh to i, it doesn't have to go long. It'll stay short. You are drinking it. So it's the same as the command form, is it? It's identical. It did not. You do have situations like that. And this won't be the only one. Where it's, it's identical. So you just catch it from tone. We're going to change i to zero, but there's a zero in front of it already that now converts to the letter a. They are drinking it. Adana. Adana. Ye awa. Khunachyake. So we had hua, but that's not what we're going to have this time. We are going to have hua. But then we have to have di. So this will end with dina, because it's a zero and open in the perfective, it's going to be long and high. I drank it. Qua dina. The order of this one is going to go perfective, i, di, na which is going to turn into ye, and then the rest. So I'll give you the, the first part will be ye. Okay, big clues. You drink it. Starts with ye. Ye dina. Ye dina. So now we're going to get something a little different. So we should start with a. Uh, then we're going to get you. Then there's a zero. Then did. Oh, did not. Which brings us to the rule of our beloved inland relatives. If you have vowel uh, perfective contracted to the W, consonant vowel, you must go vowel W consonant vowel. That'll turn to M. Um, dina. That's the rule. It must go vowel, W, consonant, vowel, root. It's the only time it'll switch. Um, siku. Um, dina. Um, dagan. Okay. 
Amsetin. I will. Oh, I gotta fix these ones too. You'll see. You'll see what I gotta fix. So it should be da. Na. That's what's going. Da na da na da na. I will drink it. Cook what the na? Ah, cook So I'm gonna fix this in person. Hold on. Cook what the na? And for some, it's gonna be cook what the na. I think it's fine. I probably have to fix the next one too. You will drink it. That's a cake G, it's hard to say. Yeah. But in this case, So the ga part is pretty straightforward. Then you get into which is a little tricky because then you got to push that vowel around in your mouth. Then you go back to, then you go to da. Ga-ke-da-na. 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 And I don't know if you folks will get the next one. So I'm happy to provide it for you. I'm going to take a chance and say. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, 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 oh, that's so right on. It's so, there's just a little bit. So yeah, so you have a guchdana, a guchdana. Let me fix this, and then I'm gonna tell you what's going on, and then we'll we'll take our brain break. Okay. With the third person, the big thing you have to look for is is there for the future. Okay. So the future must be. Minus I. If there is a vowel in the classifier, then you have to go guh. So you're going to have guh da, guh sha, guh sa, guh sha. All the others will be kukwa uh, or gupa. So for the third person, you have two forms. It's either going to be gukwa, which can contract to kukwa, or gukta, gukla, guksa, guksha. All comes down to this classifier, whether or not there's a vowel there. This is a lot. This then this is kind of just showing you all the things. We are going to start going into them one at a time, mastering the perfective, mastering the future. And then the semester might be over by then. But that, that's the sort that's the plan. Because the idea is like, once you learn how to do these two things, if you could do perfectives and futures, did, didn't, will, won't, you could do so much stuff. All the storytelling and predicting and everything. Okay, okay. Okay, let's take five. Gonna cheese you, hon. Look at her. Cheesh. So uh, it's intense to start learning how to build prefixes in. I like the picture because it's just like, oh, you're just stacking these little blocks. It's like a big lie, right? It's like, you know, it's like trying to tell some, it's not going to be hard to go shovel all that snow. And then it's like snow, 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 and ice, 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 right? But um, to give us uh, some hope and inspiration, we're going to turn to Kichnach George Davis. This is a series of speeches. There are a whole bunch of other speeches in between, but I picked his and sort of put them together into one file 
and one audio. There might be, if I remember right, there's a spot. I think I messed up the audio and it says it twice, but we'll find it. So I'll, I'll push it so that uh, my mouse will follow his speech and then I'll post this on our web page. So let me drag this over here. And this was in Sitka. And share the sound. Okay, here we go.
Ja, Ja, Ah, goes by pretty fast. It's probably one of the biggest speeches, sets of speeches ever made. And from there, I don't know if you got it. A ji ha nak, a ji ha ji ha nakas That's where the lyrics for that song comes from. This set of speeches right here. And a bunch of stuff, and I know it goes by fast. So I want, you'll have a chance to take a look at the text, to listen to it again. But just like the depth of the words, like how tired they were, how worried they were, how much they felt like nobody could understand them anymore, and, and that they just prayed and prayed that it was going to change. And the, uh, the unfortunate thing is that they, they're not here to see like these groups of people who are coming through, who could sort of listen to this and say, okay, I can't understand all of this, but when I read it, I'm seeing more and more things. I'm hearing more and more things. And, and that's the key is like feel, getting this thing. So it's like, okay, the boat is, is going to start to go. It's going to start to go. And for a lot of us, it's like we're going out into the fog. You know, we're like, okay, we know the destination is over there. But we got to go into the fog and the big waves and stuff. But like there, there's so much depth to what they're saying and to what he's saying. And then also to all the responses. So this is from, you can find it in Hatu Naku Yis. Uh, the, the name of the conference is end up being called Because We Cherish You. And there's a, another speech in there by Charlie Joseph, which is marvelous. Um, and we'll start to look a little bit more at those. But I will post the recording and the text so that you can take a closer read and check it out and see. But he says in there too, he's like, Otherwise, they'll just be walking around with books and they'll only be able to read it out of the books. And so that's that becomes our inspiration. We're going to get off book, but it's all of it's a process. And, it, and th what we're doing is we're putting this, we're burning these new pathways in your mind so that we're nesting the grammar in there. I think part of the tiredness is like something new. I think it's also the English side of the brain that says, no, this is mine. I want to share. I took it all over, you know, and, but that's that colonized part. And so you do have a thinget brain and that's what we're accessing. And we just got to convince that the, the English side of the brain can be like a stingy toddler sometimes, <laughs> like doesn't want to share anything. It's like, it's okay. But then also like just to sort of 
it does take a lot to sort of give yourself over and to be fully into the language too. And, and I think it could be scary and exhausting, but y'all are doing it. So I'm gonna cheesh, ukecha. And uh, bring something to share, some kind of song. We're gonna do some song stuff on Tuesday. Uh, and then we'll take a look as well as how songs generally have been composed. And we'll see a few examples. Anything else before we go? Cheesh. Cheesh. Ah. Cheesh. Yes, cheesh. Talking. Ah. Hine. Ah. I forgot to ask. I just remembered the um, the shkashnik that I took a picture and then I sent the screenshot from the children of the Taku. Do you, um, at some point, do you want to let me know if those those ten stories are are the ten stories that you would hope the children here in Juno would learn and then like keep adding, or did you have other stories because? I am starting to kind of think I got into the um, the, Abor the Aboriginal uh, digital language shell. They sent me the login to their college course. And I just keep hearing, yeah. And so I think I'm going to do that for my, my midterm for EDA's class. But I do keep thinking, because I hear you say that many times over. And I was like, maybe as I'm looking at that, you know, so no rush but at the same time if you're interested like i'd like to start reading those stories and identifying 10 that you would like our kids in juno to learn and how we could break start breaking them down in a skeletal form and i'm still trying to figure out what i can do working with an elder or recordings for the indigenous field language field methods but I keep hoping maybe there's something there where I'm re you know listening to the ten stories that you've selected mm -hmm. and maybe start thinking about how to break them down into like a three set of adding and double checking or I don't know. I just want it to be purposeful. So yeah, that was my only question. Okay. Okay. I'll uh I have a chat with the language nest and see what they think as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh.